Welcome to this episode and in this one it's a bit different. I'm actually going to be sharing with you uh, some slides. I'm going to be sharing with you some education of course in relation to uh, investments. Now before I begin I just want to say that anything you're about to hear today with me is nothing to do with financial advice. I'm not going to share with you what funds to invest in. I'm not going to share with you what accounts to set up or anything like that. The main reason for this video is to help those who are literally staying in the job for a wage or a pension. It's time and time again I speak to people who are you know, having mental health issues, they are having damaging stress, they are not seeing their kids, they're fed up with the same old shit. And this video is to help those think of a different path um, if they're just staying in their job for that pension, okay? Um, a lot of people are literally are just waiting for this golden goose of a pension um, at the end of their, their police career or maybe a different public se sector job um, because they're worried about the future. And actually, because they're so worried about the future, they actually miss the present and not realizing that the time they've got on this planet is not coming back. They have the one life to live and they're so focused on their pension, they are willing to sacrifice their happiness in the present. So this video is for those who are fed up with their jobs, they are literally staying in the job just for the pension, you're fed up with pension changes, you're fed up with pension dilution, you're fed up of working harder for longer with less payoff, and you're looking for an alternative, okay? Now, this strategy is something that I implement in my life, it's something that I've been doing for a while, it's also a strategy that um, I do with our clients. Now, Shifts to Success, which is my company's name, Investing to Success, is a product within the Shift Success family. Our clients are utilizing the strategy, it's working great for them so far. And also it's something that I'm going to do until I become an old man, right? Um, I'm also gonna share with you um, a few instances of uh, some things to bear in mind and think about in relation to investing. Um, because a lot of people, you know, look at the pension, they go, oh, it's a safe bet. Well, the reality is, is, you know, if you work in the police, it's been changed a number of times. You're always worried about it being changed in the future. You know, you've got no control. The reality is personally, in my opinion, that having a pension that you don't control is far riskier than investments. When it comes to investments, um, it's risky when you don't know what you're doing, okay? And that's another thing I wanna bear in mind. Everything I explained to you today, do your own due diligence on, do your own research. Uh, again, just wanna reiterate, this is not financial advice. Don't ask me what funds to invest in. I'm not gonna share them with you. I'm not gonna share uh, the funds that our clients invest, uh, invest in either. Um, this is purely educational to help those consider a different alternative um, if they're unhappy with their jobs and they're just staying it in for the pension, okay? Um, it's not willing, it's not um, worth it risking your happiness for you know 30 years if you're in the job for that pension and in all fairness this might trigger a few people so trigger alert right now if you're going to be triggered the pension's not that good all right especially what you can compare in investments okay you can see on the screen right now you can see it's not financial advice i want to reiterate that point time and time again um because i don't want any kickback on this or anything like that i'm just sharing with you what i do okay um Again, um, I've kind of explained my thoughts a little bit on the pension, but this kind of picture of uh, a donkey and um, the dangling carrot reminds me of a pension. You know, uh, as a young age, I remember Mr. Frettingham. I went to a, a Catholic school called Christ the King Catholic School. And uh, I can remember Mr. Frettingham, um, he stood up at the end of uh, one of the last classes with him. He was a geography teacher. And he said, Guys, whatever you do, make sure you get a pension, okay? And I can remember thinking there and then, you know, why should I take advice from this person, right? He obviously, I don't know if he likes his job or not. He didn't like it when, seemed to like it when I was in his class, mainly because of me. But I thought there and then, you know, why should I take advice from this person? Why should I take advice from someone who is really, you know, um, not in the result-based um, focus of where I want to be? Okay, and that's something for you to consider. Um, Robert Kiyosaki first said this, uh, is a great author by the way, check out his books, Rich Dad, Poor Dads. He said that poverty is passed down through generations, it's hereditary, right? And there's some truth to that. I know, you know, pe uh, parents and teachers passed on stuff what they learned from people before them. And the reality is the people for them and even the parents and teachers teaching you are actually not financially successful. They're not financially 
um, you know, in a place of where they probably should be giving advice. And we take that advice on board because these people love us. They respect us. They love us. They care for us. And those that piece of advice, unfortunately, can knock us back years. It's been indoctrinated into us thinking, go to school, get good grades, go to university maybe, get a good job and get a pension. And, you know, Warren Buffett, I'm going to share Warren Buffett with you in a second. You know, Warren Buffett says, observe the masses and do the opposite. Okay, and it's true. When it comes to the pension is that a lot of people just opt into the pension because everyone else is doing it. In fact, I spoke to a police officer recently. I asked him, what is the reason for being in the pension? And he literally said, because everyone else is doing it. And it's that herd mentality. And in fact, when some of our own clients opt out of the pension because they're building epic businesses and investing for themselves, they get this weird look from colleagues around them thinking, what are you doing? That's risky. Right, because people have literally been brought up to think that is the right thing to do. So what I'm trying to share with you is to question everything. Question things your parents, your teachers, even myself or anyone are going trying to educate you on, or you know, even people out there giving you advice on certain things. Okay. Always ask, is there congruency in this? Okay. And again, do your own research from this video. Um, so this this picture, going back to this, is it reminds me of the pension because you know, you could be this donkey, right? And the, the carrot is a, is a is the pension, which is a retention tool to keep the donkey moving, to keep you working until your back's broken, till you develop mental health issues, till you're tired and fell up, fed up. And unfortunately, at the end of your, uh, your career or when you reach retirement, you're just not the same person anymore, right? You've developed issues, you might have, you know, gone through injuries, you might have just you know, have a different, different cynical view about the beautiful planet that we're on. And you can see here that the stick is there, right? The stick is there because no matter where the donkey goes, the carrot's always going to be out of reach. And now more than ever, due to the pension changes in the police and maybe other public sector roles, is that, you know, you've got no control and they can move the goalposts. And there's all this commotion about fighting the pension, pension challenges, and, you know, there's a great quote again, instead of focusing your energy on fighting the old, instead, focus on building the new. And for you right now, listen to me, hopefully this can be a new for you. So going on from that, uh, again, another great quote from Warren Buffett that says, if you don't find a way to make money whilst you sleep, you're going to work until you die. And it's so true. With the investment strategy I'm going to share with you, which, by the way, is buying into the low cost index funds okay low cost index funds i'm not going to share with you what funds uh, I, I invest in but basically when i invest in these due to compound interest i am producing passive income without me being present i could be on holiday i could be working i could be in the gym or playing golf it doesn't matter i'm consistently um work i'm consistently earning from my passive investments and the reality is with this is that a lot of people think that the pension's going to be enough by the time they retire. I know many people in the NHS or police who have got to get another job after they retire from their initial career, right? Which is crazy. Uh, or they have to be start a business, right? Because they need to produce that money because they've got a certain lifestyle now and they may have mortgages to pay off. And also inflation, right? Inflation eats away at the buying power that we have for our money. So all these variables come into play. Unfortunately, people have to create an additional stream of income. And the reality is we don't actually retire. People work until they die and we don't want that, okay? So why invest? Why do I invest? Now, number one is control. Um, I see it time and time again, as I've uh, mentioned, that people are fighting the pension. They're going through pension challenges. They are literally going to certain federations and with their pitchforks, you know, kicking off. And I get it. I'd be pissed too, right? Especially if you're kind of promised this is the way it's going to go and then someone changes that. But the reality is no one's going to look after your money better than you. And for me, I know this because, you know, I, I it's my money. I want to make sure it goes longer and it's actually um, go, goes for longer and also earns me money when it's not just being static in a certain account. Right, so I have absolute control. If I want to invest in certain things, I can invest in that, I can increase my investments, but also I can get that investment back. You try and in, uh, ring the pension office and try and get your pensions from the police or maybe even the NHS or any public sector role. Unfortunately, I believe you have to actually 
reach a certain age until you get that. I, you can transfer it to a different job. Again, again, don't quote me on that. But if you want that money in your bank account again, even though it's your money, unfortunately, it's locked away until you reach a certain age. So for me, I love the control. Next one is passive income. So um, there's active income, there's passive income. When I invest in index funds, um, I'm producing passive interest income uh, on my investments, okay? Again, as I mentioned, I could be traveling, working, gym in it, or golf in it. Doesn't really matter. I am using this strategy to build wealth on autopilot. With that being said as well, you can set up direct debits and uh, st uh, you know a kind of an automation process to make sure uh, these are going into your investments so you don't have to place the investments every single month. Again, another strategy to build wealth, completely passive. The other one is you can invest anywhere in the world. So with a pension, typically, if you're in a certain area of the UK or sorry, if you're living in the UK, you'll get a pension um, based on a geographically based location, right? You're, you're in the UK. Well, if I want to invest in America and I'm based in the UK, I can do so. If I want to invest in Japan, I can do so. If I want to invest in Europe, I can do so. I can invest typically in any country I want to if it's listed in the index funds that I want to invest in, okay? Uh, which is really important, okay? So I can diversify my portfolio. And the last one is build generational wealth. In fact, there's a great quote there, a good person leaves wealth for their children's children. And I love that, you know, I've not got children and that's not to make you feel bad if you're not doing that. It just inspires me. That quote inspires me. It's not my quote, um, but it does inspire me because that's the power I have with my investment strategy. I'm not just investing for myself when I reach retirement. Um, I'm actually changing my family tree forever so that they've got that wealth after I die, okay? Uh, and you have the power to do this as well, uh, which is amazing, right? It's absolutely amazing. So in a nutshell, this image right now you can see is my investment strategy. I'm gonna walk you through these differences. Now, first of all, you've got a job income. Now, the job income, it is capped. You can work... 40, 50, 60 hours a week, but unfortunately it will be capped because there's only one of you and there's only a certain amount of hours in a week, right? Um, you can work overtime, of course, and get more money there, but eventually it's going to be capped regardless, okay? Whether that's going to be 100,000, 200,000, wherever, it's going to be capped. Whereas business, you don't have to have a capped income because you can launch new products, you can increase product prices, decrease costs, you can go to a different niche. There's loads of things you can do to accelerate your income, okay? And that's a big Thing to know. When it comes to investments, you want to make sure you're accelerating your income so you have actually more money to invest, okay? So a job income, yes, you can invest with that kind of income, which I'll share with you in the compound interest calculator. But when you have a business income with that non-cap, you can then use this surplus of cash to invest in, um, in index funds, which is going to accelerate that compound growth over a long period of time. So when you have your job income, or in fact your business income, you wanna spend less than you earn and invest the difference, okay? So a lot of people when they, you know, they get a promotion in the job or when they, um, I don't know, get, even get great business income, right? They they get some money of some, some aspects and they have something called lifestyle inflation. So if they're earning an additional 1,000 pound per month from their job or business, then all of a sudden they'll spend that because they just want to spend it and they want to increase their lifestyle. They'll buy gadgets. They might get a bigger mortgage. They might get, you know, uh, other things that they really don't need because they're fixated on consumerism. Whereas if uh, what I'm doing, what am I, my strategy, no matter what income I'm in, is that I don't increase my lifestyle massively. Uh, you know, I've got things that mean uh, important things to me. Um, and instead I invest, you know, the difference. I want to get that money into uh, investments in index funds. So it's actually... Uh, earning the money, right? For every pound that I have, um, that pound has got a job, an objective to earn me more money. And that happens through the index funds. So hopefully that makes sense as a snapshot of what I do with regards to my investment strategy. At the center of all of this, and this is something called a, like a wealth cycle, is that my business income feeds my investments and my investments can feed my business if the business was take a hit or for whatever reason I was to, you know, you know, not get where I want to be in business, then I've got that investments there always working for me and I can withdraw from that if needed to fund my business. But the epicenter of all this, of all the center of the core essence of all this is freedom. 
for me, freedom is everything. It makes me the happy person. Um, I can do what I want, when I want, with who I want, as much as I want, and that's important. And a lot of people think that money doesn't bring happiness, but it's not so much the money itself. It's not, you know, the, the cash in the hand or looking in your bank that makes you happy or makes me happy. It's the freedom, it's the choice aspect. Knowing if my uh, dogs are real, then I can afford an operation for them. Or if I, you know, want to go and travel and see a, a long lost friend, then I can do that. If I want to, um, you know, do something like, I don't know, um, take up a new hobby like golf, which I took up in June 2020, I don't need to, you know, think about certain variables if I can do that or not, because I've got the choice, which also comes down to time. So, you know, having your own business and having the investments there gives you that time, which gives you choice, which gives you that freedom. So hopefully that makes sense. I also want to say, and this is a picture that came up on Google and it's so true. Sometimes the chains that prevent us from being free are more mental than physical. And I completely agree. Coming out of the pension, and by the way, I just want to say disclaimer that this is not advice to come out of the pension either. Do as you please. This is just a training this is a um, educational um, lesson on a difference between the pension and also what you can achieve in an index fund okay now coming out of the pension the actual action of doing that isn't hard right it's not hard it may be frustrating but it's not hard to do it's actually more mental actually coming away from that that's more of a kind of a cause of conflict in us and I believe that actually when you step away from, you know, the pension and some of our clients have said this, they felt more free straight away because they haven't got that chain associated with that kind of retention tool in the job that's caused them to be unhappy. So again, this is a disclaimer. I'm not telling you to come out of the pension. Do as you please. So the next thing I want to go through is a bit of an example, okay? Now, uh, this is John. Uh, John saves £500 and gets a 2% return in an interest account, okay? Um, John um, it could invest in a, a bank account or a, a different kind of investment. Um, whatever it may be, um, it's 2%, okay? It's probably not the bank because in the bank you don't get that much, but um, it's 2%. Next, we have Josie. Now, Josie earns £500 per month and gets a 10% return by investing in index funds, okay? So you can see they both invest exactly the same, which is for 30 years, giving them total investments of 180000 So both of them invest £500 for 12 months times by 30 years, which gives them £180,000 they're putting in, okay? And they do that for 30 years, okay? So John achieves a total of 246,773 and 30 pence, whereas Josie, hopefully you're sitting down, 1,139,662 and 66 pence. That is mind-blowing. That is a completely different game compared to John because she's getting a better return and also she's got that compound interest in effect, okay? Compound interest, I think Albert Einstein was reportedly quoted this, that is the eighth wonder of the world, and I completely agree. I love compound interest. So you can see here, from John's perspective, his graph looks like this. Green deposits, these are deposits, and then you've got the orange, which is the uh, the investments, the passive interest he's achieving. Then Josie, on the other hand, has got her deposits, which is the green, the deposits, okay? Um, it's her money going in, just like John, but her passive income is much bigger than John's. Her passive interest is through the roof, right? And you can see this, and it's reflected through the orange on Josie's side. All right, guys, so... Now I wanna go through the uh, compound interest calculator. You can check out the site, it's thecalculatorsite.com. I'm gonna explain what compound interest is and also some mind boggling numbers that you could achieve uh, through this strategy. Again, I'm not gonna explain what funds I invest in as I, get, as I mentioned, what accounts or anything like that. It's just to show you that the pension is not the be all and end all, especially if you're unhappy with your job, okay? And we, we definitely don't want that because Life's for living, not just existing. So um, let's say you start off with uh, zero, okay? So you've got zero investments, you're new to this, and you know you can achieve a 10% return, okay? the In the short term, you know, you might have a year that produces 3%, 5%, 7%, 15%, 20%. The markets go up and down, okay? And basically, index funds, you're investing in companies. Now, for me... Um, I invest in a range of companies, so I've got uh, sector diversification, so I'm not just investing in one sector, 
I'm not investing in just one company like Tesla or Apple. Um, I'm investing in a whole heap of different companies. And also I've got time diversification, something called dollar cost averaging, which basically means I'm investing every single month. So whether the market goes up and down, I'm not trying to time the market. I'll say that again, I'm not trying to time the market. I'm not trying to you know, uh, buy at a great price and then sell. I'm not trying to do that at all. That's a fool's errand. Instead, what I'm doing is actually consistently investing every single month because I'm going to find that average mean. So time in the market is where I'm, what well, basically I utilize, okay? So um, I've got that diversification. I've got company, sector, and time diversification. And also I've got com um, country diversification. So I don't just invest in one company. I actually uh, invest glo globally, okay? Which is important because... If, say, for example, the UK or America gets hit for whatever reason, I don't know, um, whatever that reason might be, then actually I've got different investments in different countries, okay? So I'm completely diversified, which minimizes my risk. So going on to this, let's say this story is that you've just joined the police. They say, do you want to go into the pension? Um, probably not as straightforward as this. Um, but let's say, you know what? I'm not going to go into the pension because I'm going to invest. And let's say you're going to invest and you stay in the job for 30 years and you invest £450, which is the average you invest over that 30-year period, okay? So you're going to get 10%, you start off with zero, 30 years, you're investing £450 per month, okay? And you can see from this that you're going to achieve £1,017,219.57. Now, I'm going to explain why this is, okay? Um, it's a lot. And, and again, Compare this against your pension, all right? Um, you know, if you don't know the numbers of what you're expected to come out with, with your pension, you've got an issue, right? You should be knowing that information. You want to make sure you've got a forecast of what you're essentially going to be coming out with in pension. And um, especially if you're, you know, miserable, right? If you're unhappy in the job and you're just there for that reason, you definitely want to know that information. Then what you can do is compare it against this and, and use this calculator as a tool to see, you know, what if I get 12% or what if I get 8%, right? There's different things you can work out. But let's, I'm going to work through this now, What how this all works. So um, basically you're investing £450 over 12 months, okay? You can see here £450 times by 12 is going to give you 5,400, okay? Now, you can see here that it's an effective annual rate. I'm going to explain what this is. If you click this button, I'll actually explain with you uh, to you right now. Um, the effective annual rate is the rate of interest that you actually receive on your savings after inclusion of compounding. When compounding of interest takes place, the effective annual rate becomes higher than the overall interest. The more times the interest is compounded within a year, the higher the effective annual rate will be basically means it's just above 10% because of the investments that have going off, okay? But for quick maths, we're just gonna focus on 10%, it's completely fine. So 5,400 is 450 times 12. You've got completely passive, the income that you've achieved, the interest is 254 pound and 51p. Now the next year, you invest exactly the same. You don't increase it, you don't increase your, um, your, you know, your investments whatsoever, it's exactly the same, nothing changes. And this means now that you've got a total pot because the year previous has been left in. So you've got 5,400 from year one, 5,000 from year 400 from year two. So that's 10,800 in total. Now this means that you've got now 846 pounds and 61 P in interest you've earned, right? Which is more than double of the year prior. And the reason for this is because you've actually earned the interest on the 10,800 from the two years. And also you've earned the interest on the interest that you earned the year previously. And what starts to happen is this starts to compound over time. It's the growth on the growth. It's the interest on the interest. And as we move down this graph, you can see this starts to snowball massively. We can look at the graph now. It starts to take off a bit like Josie's we saw in the previous example. And you can see by year 10, in that year, you earn 8,456, a total over the years of 38,000, which is crazy, completely passive. And again, as this snowballs, as years go on, 30 years happens, and you end up with a completely passive 855,000 um, in interest, which is great, giving you that total because your deposits are going to be, that's never lost as well, that's also going to be in there. Uh, is 
and 17,000, which is pretty cool, right? Um, again, compare it against your pension if you're unhappy. I'm gonna use a different example now. So let's say that's the job and you're investing. Let's say you're going to, um, let's say you're in business and you've got no cap on your income and you can put afford to put 1,000 for, 1,500, let's use 1,500. And you can invest for 30 years again, 10%. We can see the numbers are gonna be different because you're putting more money in. So you're gonna achieve 3,397,513 uh, uh, pound, okay, and 35p. And again, that's happened because you've put more money in and over the years it's compounded, compounded, compounded. And if you see this graph, it looks like this now, okay? So again, it's gone more steeper on the passive income side of things. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna share with you one more example, which is to do with if you're a parent and you've got kids. So this next example is if you've got kids, we're gonna do 10% again, um, but this time you've got a newborn baby and you know about this stuff now and uh, you wanna make sure they have the opportunity to I don't know, let's say 40 years. By the time they're 40, they can retire, okay? Um, because again, <laughs> you know, it's not about an age, it's about a number. If they can retire at 40 and they have the opportunity to do that, well, at least they've got more choices in their life, right? So let's say um, you only invest, you know, 300 pounds for them, okay? 300 pounds until they reach 18 uh, or 21 and then they can take over. You might wanna say, hey, you know, you're old enough now, you can take over. Um, let's just see how this, what happens. So they've got 40 years to invest. Oh, sorry, 40 years, not 35. 300 pound and we'll see what happens. So you can see here 1.8 million, all right? 1,897,223 pound and 87p. And at year 18, they would have had a pot of 180,000 pound by the time they reach 18. Then they may wanna take over and start investing more or the same. Um, and even at 21, um, they've got half, sorry, quarter of a million, 255,000, which is epic, which is absolutely amazing. So again, you've got a few variables there, right? You've got actually the interest you're achieving. You've also got um, the amount of money you're putting in. And also you've got time. Time is a big, big, big factor. If you are uh, older, for example, and you know, you've, you know, you want to, you do want to retire at 65 or 70, I don't know. Um, put whatever years you've got left to retire, um, put your 10% in or 8% or whatever number you wanna put in there based on what funds you want to invest in and um, historic uh, data. And that's another important note, historic data is not a predicator of future performance, just bear that in mind. Um, and have a play around with the, how much money you can put in that, all right? And you'll be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised of what you can achieve. Um, again, I am not anti-pension, guys. I am not anti-job but I am pro happiness, I'm pro working in a career that you love, and I'm pro people being recognized for the work they do. Um, again, you know, if you know me, if you don't know me, I don't believe anyone should sacrifice the happiness for a wage or a pension. And this video hopefully explains that there is a different path out there that you may not be aware of that many people are utilizing, but you're just not aware of it. It's not in your, um, it's not in your kind of focus at the minute because your focus might be elsewhere, such as the pension or dreading through your job every single day. So again, hopefully this makes sense. It's not financial advice. I'm not anti-job, I'm not anti-pension. Um, it's just to give you that education going forward. And um, yeah, I hope it helps. If you've got any questions on this in the uh, in, at all, drop them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, I can't give financial advice. I just want to reach that point. And also, if you have liked this video, if it's gave you a light bulb moment, if you, you know, want more of these videos, let me know. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, share if you find it very valuable. And I'll be seeing you on the next video.